Number 79. Explain how a molecule that contains polar bonds can be nonpolar. Okay, so they're saying that it's a molecule, so that automatically means that it's covalent. And remember, there are two types of covalent molecules. There are polar, uh, we'll say polar covalent molecules, CM, and then we have nonpolar covalent molecules. This is describing the overall molecule, not the individual bonds. So you could think of this analogy as SNAP. S stands for symmetrical. So if a compound, a molecule, a, a covalent molecule is symmetrical, it looks the same on all sides, it would be classified as nonpolar. And if a covalent molecule is asymmetrical, it doesn't look the same on all sides, then it would be classified as a polar molecule. So you could think of the word SNAP, symmetrical, nonpolar, asymmetrical, polar. Okay, so that's what that breaks down to. Polar would be asymmetrical, and nonpolar would be symmetrical. All right, so let's kind of think of some nonpolar covalent molecules. They just have to be the same on both sides. Now, a lot of you, let's just get this out of the way, a lot of you might say water, right? If I look at water, I have two hydrogens and two lone pairs. So a lot of students think that if I cut this down the middle, right, it looks the same, right? This side completely looks the same from this side, which would make it symmetrical. But you have to be able to cut it up in many different ways and they all should be the same. Look at this. Is this the same as this? No. So actually water is uh, polar. So this would not be a nonpolar uh, molecule, all right? And just to say, any time that you have lone electrons in the center or the central atom, it's automatically going to be a polar molecule. So I automatically see lone pairs. This whole molecule, water as a whole, would be a polar molecule. All right, so let me just erase, the, erase this, and now let's try to draw something that's actually symmetrical. So what comes to mind is CH4. So in this case, you have carbon that's bound to four different atoms and those four atoms are hydrogen. That's drawing the Lewis structure. And in this case, what are the bonds, right? Well, the individual bonds, it looks like it's just a carbon that's bound to a hydrogen. And I have four of them, carbon bound to a hydrogen, carbon bound to a hydrogen. So in this case, I have four CH bonds. Now, let's just see if these are polar bonds. So it's symmetrical because if I can, you know, cut this up in all different types of ways, it will all be symmetrical, right? But now how are we going to find out whether a bond is polar? That means that it falls in this type of category. Oh, it comes from always the electronegativity difference, right? The electronegativity difference has to be between 0.4 all the way to 0.8. And in this case, I gave you your electronegativity numbers that are in your textbook, carbon is 2.5 and hydrogen is 2.1. So when you subtract those two, 2.5 minus 2.1, you do get 0 0.4, which technically would end up here, which would be a polar bond. Now, in a lot of other textbooks, they actually say that CH bonds are actually nonpolar. So I would just have to say, check with your teacher on that one even though the math that they're supplying you guys with this textbook, it says that it's polar. So technically, I mean, this would be one example of having a nonpolar compound, but having polar bonds. Let me give you a other example, if I can just erase this. This would be a pure um, polar bonds, but total will be uh, nonpolar, is CF. Four. So if I have CF4, I have carbon in the middle surrounded by four fluorines, and each fluorine has the three lone pairs. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then last over here. So if I try to split this compound any which way, it's always going to be symmetrical because it's four fluorines. There's no different element. They're all fluorines. So this whole molecule would be classified as nonpolar. Now let's look at the actual individual bonds. It looks like it's a carbon that's bound with a fluorine, and there's four of them. Carbon, like we said before, was 2.5, and fluorine is 4.0. So when we do the subtraction, that's the electronegativity difference, 4.0 minus 2.5 gives us 1.5, and that's clearly between 0.4 and 1.8. So this would be clearly polar. So that means that each bond, 1, 2, 3, and 4, are all polar bonds, but since they're all the same, they all cancel out. This one is, well, I'll put it with the highlighter here. This one, the electronegative, well, the electrons are favoring the fluorine, so it's pulling upward. But then this one, it's favoring the fluorine, so it's pulling downward. And because of that, these will cancel out. The same thing with the left and the right side. So that's how a nonpolar covalent molecule could have co uh, polar bonds. Because they could have the polar bonds, but then they will just all cancel out, and that's why it would be nonpolar, it would be symmetrical, no dipole. All right, and that takes care of number 79. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Um, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Subscribe to the channel if you want to. Thank you so much. Keep studying hard. See you guys in the next question. Bye-bye.